Today, I want to introduce a, a good friend, Dr. Tommy Watson. There are a few people that you run into life and you're inspired by, you know, what they do and uh, how they have faced some of the challenges and come out in, in such flying colors. Uh, today's speaker, one of the speakers today, Dr. Do Tommy Watson, is one such character. The first time we had a chance to sit down and have a breakfast, we connected so well. Um, and so uh, immediately, uh, right after, he said, like, uh, Sir, how can I be part of this? And I said, Dr. Tommy, can you come and speak to our kids? And without even a blink, and he said, yes. And in fact, he pressed on me and said, Cyril, when is the next kids to career? You know, I'm thinking, you know, brother Tommy, you're so glad, I know, we're so glad to have you here. But at the same time, your enthusiasm and uh, your passion, it just overflows. Uh, I mean, Dr. Tommy, Miss Sarah always says, uh, living life to the fullest till it overflows. And we see that in your life. And so uh, it is with uh, such a, a, a pleasure to introduce you this morning. Uh, and uh, the floor is all yours, brother. And uh, you can take a, um, you know the share as well. Awesome. Dr. I'm giving you Dr. Surreal. We call you Dr. Surreal for the work you're doing, man. It's amazing work. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, Dr. Liz, thank you very much as well. And for the amazing uh, um, um, team you have, man, give yourself a round of applause for our team here. Great team. Thank Love you. it. So, everyone want to see my screen out there? Yes. So, to, to everyone, uh, it's a pleasure to be with you this morning. It's an honor to be with you. Um, you guys have some big goals. I know you, I've heard a lot, heard a lot about, you know, the work you guys are doing with uh, uh, Dr. Surreal and he's, he's fired up and telling me about the big goals and dreams and careers you guys are pursuing. So today I want to talk to you guys about staying motivated on this journey, because those of us who have got a little bit of age behind us can tell you that there's going to be some bumps in the road you're going to run into and you're going to need to be able to keep that motivation to go on and achieve those goals. And even for us, we, we have to stay on fire to keep going and keep doing the work we're doing as well. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that in just a second here. Make sure everybody can see my screen. Still with me there? Mm -hmm. Again, appreciate all the work you guys are doing as well. So quick overview of our time together here. I'm not going to be like the pastor of your church. I'm not going to keep you all day today, okay? I'm going to give you a little bit of information <laughs> and get you fired up and let you get kind of get on your way, though. But I'm going to share with you my own personal story, some of the challenges and uh, tribulations I had to kind of go through. I'm going to give you the three V's of staying motivated. I want this to be very, very important. You stay connected to those three V's. And then we're going to open up for Q&A. And then uh, Dr. Surreal, I got, a, I got a surprise for him at the end. You got to make sure I, I give him that surprise at the end, all right? Okay. Fantastic. Okay. Awesome. So the first thing, and also I want to encourage you guys as students and parents, feel free to take pictures of my slides as well, okay? So I want to start with the first, que first question. My first question is, what does it mean to have hope, H-O-P-E? And just feel free to jump off of, um, come off of mute and uh, just tell me, shout it out. What does it mean to have hope? You can shout it out. Just talk to me. I think hope means believing in something that will like happen, like trying to make something happen or just like being optimistic. I love it. Very well said. Absolutely. Anyone else want to share out? I think hope is like similar to faith. Yeah. Um, it's like synonyms of faith. Not yeah, synonyms of faith. So um, yeah, that's the best way I can explain it, honestly. It's the same well as yeah, talking thanks. to the same thing of faith. Yes. Anyone else? Awesome. You guys hit it on the head. Here's the acronym I, I like using for, for hope. I want everyone to take a picture of the slide here, okay? Have only positive expectations or screenshot it, whatever you have to do, because it is going to be absolutely critical if you're going to move forward and achieve any goal that you have, you have to have hope. Have only positive expectations. So you have to believe in the end you're going to win. Because whenever you go into a situation and there's some doubt there, or you're thinking that, oh, I may not necessarily win, you're probably not going to be able to achieve that goal or dream. So it's going to be very, very important that you take a picture of this slide, keep this handy, have only positive expectations. No matter what you face and go through in life, you have to believe and then you're going to win. Another note I want to make is going to, it's very, very important to dream beyond your circumstances. People often ask, they say, Dr. Watson, how did you make it beyond your circumstances? And I tell them I had to have a dream. And you'll find this is one of the most common behaviors of most successful of all successful people. 
They were able to dream it before they were actually able to, to really get it into fruition. So I want you to be able to be a dreamer, no matter what your circumstances are telling you, I want you to have a dream that's bigger than your circumstances. And for me, that's the key to how I got to where I am today. You know, I had to not only dream beyond my circumstances, but it allowed me to survive and also stay alive. You'll hear in a, in a few moments here that literally my dreams allowed me to stay alive. Now, a little bit about myself and my story. So I'm originally from uh, Denver, Colorado, so I'm a big Denver Broncos fan. I'm a little disappointed in our season so far, but I'm a Broncos fan. Um, you know, Denver, you you won't uh, you won't get uh, you know a uh, uh, pity for that because uh, <laughs> we are from Panthers still. <laughs> You're right. You guys had a couple more wins than me, so we'll we'll, we'll we'll talk about that though. Yeah, sure. So I'm originally from Denver, Colorado, and several years ago I was back home in Denver, and I was sharing my story with the local newspaper. And as I was sharing with the reporter, she stopped me midway through and she said, okay, Mr. Watson, what you're saying sounds okay, but I need to make sure what you're saying is actually true. So she asked for my parents' names. I said, that's fine. I said, just don't use their names in the story. So I continued to tell my story to the newspaper reporter. I stopped, we ended. I was living in Minnesota the next day. I went back to Minnesota. The following day I received a phone call and it was a reporter and she says, uh, Mr. Watson, Typically, when someone like you tells their story, they tend to exaggerate their story. She said, in fact, you're not telling your whole story. She said, I'm looking at your parents' criminal background records. And there's a lot of things you're leaving out. And at this point, I had never come across my parents' criminal background records, so I didn't know what she was talking about. It was until years later that I actually got a chance to see my parents' criminal background records. So here's, here's what I found out. So top page, my mother's, um, 12 pages front and back. Bottom, my father's 18 pages front and back. So my, by the time I finished high school, my mother and father arrested a total of 121 times. They were drug addicts and shoplifters in Denver, Colorado. Wow. In fact, my very first year I was born, this cute little fat little baby boy, <laughs> my mother was arrested 11 times, 11 times. And by the time I was in third grade, I lived in numerous foster homes, crisis centers, motel rooms, lived with my grandmother several times, uh, lived with different friends and family members. I went to four different elementary schools, Within one year, had a learning disability I didn't know anything about at the time. Struggled in school. My teachers didn't believe in me. I didn't believe in myself. And then when I was in second grade, I met my oldest brother by pure coincidence, who was, he was visiting a foster home we were in with another family. And my two older sisters happened to, to remember him. That's the very first time I met my oldest brother. And I remember by the time I was in third grade, behind this smile was lots of pain. And in the 80s, when the Crips and Bloods were being run out of L.A., they migrated to Denver, Colorado. And behind this third grade, with all this pain, I wanted to join the local Crips. That was my goal as a third grader. And my aunt, at the time, who I was living with, she was very smart. And she said, I got to get this kid involved in something. He's going to probably die early or end up in the penitentiary at an early age. I was so destructive. So my aunt got me involved in basketball. And basketball literally saved my life because everything I was looking for in the world of gangs, I received from playing basketball, a sense of belonging a great male mentor coach. Uh, other kids got a good chance to be on other kids who had similar goals and dreams. So basketball was my everything. By my seventh grade year of school, we were back in another situation where we were renting a house. I was with my mother and father for two years now. Um, and we were renting a house in the neighborhood. And it was a beautiful sunny day in the city of Denver, the summertime before my eighth grade year of school. I'm at home enjoying television and suddenly there's a knock at the door. And I go to the door and to my surprise, there stood the police and local sheriffs. I'm like, whoa, why are you here? Well, they had informed me that my parents had not been paying rent and we had to get out. And I'm like, get out. And I said to them, I said, don't you mean in like 60 days, right? Because we've gone through this before. They said, no. I said, you mean in like 30 days, right? They said, no. I said, so, so when are we supposed to get out? And they said, right now. And they immediately went into our house and started taking all of our stuff and started throwing it into the front yard. And I just kept saying, so where are we supposed to go? Where are we supposed to go? And they said, that's not our problem. They continued throwing all of our stuff into the front yard. And I remember just thinking to myself, where are we supposed to, to go? And after some time, I finally mustered up the courage of my siblings to walk out of the house. And I remember miss, listening to all of our things being thrown behind me, breaking in the yard. And I took a moment to look up at all the porches around me. And they were all my friends laughing, giggling, and making jokes during the lowest point of my life. And there was a piece of me that wanted to, to break down and start crying right then and there, but I kept it together. 
That evening, I couldn't keep it together as we knew, as we actually watched the folks in the neighborhood go into our yard and take everything we own. There was nothing we could do about it. From there, my family of nine of us moved into our seventh motel room where we lived my entire eighth grade year of school. Mm. Nine people, one bedroom, two beds, one bathroom, my entire eighth grade year of school. All six of the adults were drug addicts in the room. My mother and father were heroin addicts. My grandmother and her boyfriend were alcoholics. My older sister and her boyfriend were doing crack cocaine. And me and my little brother and little sister left to fend for ourselves. Our clothes sat wrapped in a corner in sheets. They were dirty. So we talked about, we went to school, not only by the teachers, I mean, by, by our students, but also by the teachers. So it was pretty heartbreaking going to school. But during this time, I kept, I stayed involved in basketball and ended up running into a, a guy who came into the inner cities of Denver and talked to me and my comrades at a basketball game, he mentioned the opportunity to go out to his private suburban Denver High School. And he said, if you come out here, you can go to college. I said, whoa, college? Because at this point in time, for being a black male in the city of Denver, college wasn't on our radar screen. The black males are going to prison early, dying early, drugs, and all these other things. So when he gave, talked to miss, me and my comrades about college, I started to have hope for the very first time. And this is the impact of hope. So while living in that motel room with no parental and guidance, these are all the wars I've won by living in that motel room. Okay. I became the one one basketball champ in my, my um, high school, uh, middle school, the wrestling champ. I got on the honor roll for the very first time ever in school. And then I won an award that was given to a handful of kids in the entire state of Colorado, the Colorado Youth Citizenship Award, all while living in that motel room. So when I tell you that hope is a powerful, powerful thing, it's everything. With hope, you can accomplish anything. Without it, you can't do much of anything. So I finally got into the school and I told my mother and father about the chance to go out to this high school. And they said, boy, no, you're not going out to that, that white high school. They don't want you out there. And I was, I was devastated. So I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do then. Well, they ended up going back to prison in my eighth grade year of school. And now me and my little brother, and my little sister moved with my other grandmother who came out of retirement to take care of us and moved us into the heart of our neighborhoods, which was now being called Little Compton because of all the gangs that had migrated from LA were now in Denver and everything was going on. It was my grandmother, my grandmother Helen, it was her, her wish that I go out to this high school and do well every day. So every morning, starting at 6.30 in the morning, I took three city buses to high school each morning. I would play sports afterwards and I would get back home anywhere between eight and 10 o'clock at night. I did this for a number of years. By my 11th grade year of school, my grandmother had developed Alzheimer's disease. My little brother got involved in gangs and taking a gun to school and attempted to shoot a kid in school with a gun. He was being shipped off to juvenile prison. My older brother who I met in foster home was now coming back around because he had ties to the same gangs. My, my, my little brother, my older sister was now on the streets doing crack cocaine. And my mom now gets out of prison. She's trying to do the right thing, but what was the big challenge she faced? No Finding one would give job. her away. What's that? Not finding a job. I find a job. No one would give her a second chance. Even though her heart was in the right place, she wanted to do the right thing. No one would give her a second chance. So my mom ended up turning to sell drugs to take care of us. And in the middle of my senior year of high school, I received a daunting call that my mother had just been busted for selling drugs and was on her way back to prison again. I was devastated. In the meantime, I was being recruited as one of the top football players in the country. I was an All-American football player. I had over 30 scholarship offers. I was the MVP and my life was falling apart. This is an example of where the coaches and the colleges were sending all these different letters, all the different places I was living. So Penn State sent a letter to, they were trying to find me to my downing address, which was the last address I was at with my aunt. Uh, the Texas uh, uh, and m sent one to the Humboldt address, last address I was at with my grandmother. Um, the other one sent one to still the last address I was at with my mom and the Florida Gators couldn't find me at all. They sent it to my high school. So I was all over the place. So during this time, how do you think my how do you think my grades were? How do you think my grades were? Think they were good, bad? Who says good? Anybody says good out there? Yeah. Says say me. Me. Who says me? See justice. He said he believed in me. Okay. Actually, they were horrible. You look at the bottom there. You see a one point seven five. Horrible. I was struggling. How many days of school do you think I missed during that time? Probably a lot. Yeah. Nancy, you say a lot too, Nancy? Yeah. yeah. Hey, Justin, 
Look at the second line from the bottom of Justice and see what it says when it says uh, tardies and absence. How many does it say? Come off the of mute, Justice, and tell me. Can you point it out for me, please? It's kind of hard to see. The second line second from line. the bottom. Okay. Oh, my. None. Yeah. Zero. Zero. I missed zero days of school in the midst of all that. Why? Because I knew education was going to be important. I knew education was going to be my lifeline. So I kept going to school no matter what, no matter where I was living at. I found a way to get to that schoolhouse every day. And my teacher simply said, if you get here, we'll take care of the rest. We can't control what happens outside of school, but you got to get here. So my dream was bigger mm -hmm. than my circumstances. So here I am on National Football Signing Day signing my letter in the principal's office to go play football at the University of Minnesota. But what you can't see is all the media that's stuffed in the principal's office. They're all celebrating my success on the football field. But in the back of my mind right here, I'm wondering where am I going to sleep at tonight? As I eventually found myself homeless and didn't have anywhere to stay. At. But a friend of family came through and said, hey, I'm going to let you sleep on my floor, but you got to be out come May. And I told you guys before, school was really tough for me. So I struggled to graduate from high school, barely graduate from high school. My family put me on a Greyhound bus and sent me off to the University of Minnesota and they said goodbye. That was 30 years ago. I've never moved back home to Denver. So I got to the University of Minnesota, which was the, the second largest college in the country. I got there. My mom was in prison. They had never had an athlete come to my circumstance. So I got there. My mom was in prison. My dad was in prison. My little brother was in prison. My grandmother, who's my last legal guardian, was in a nursing home. My oldest brother was back in Denver gangbanging. My oldest sister's back there on crack cocaine. My second oldest sister was in foster care in Iowa. My younger sister was back in Denver living with my aunt. And between my junior and senior of high school, I lived in five different locations and spent the last six months homeless sleeping on the floor of a family friend. I got to the University of Minnesota. It came down to either focusing on football or academics. Which one do you think I focused on? Football. Football. Nancy, you didn't believe in me, huh? <laughs> who says, who, who believed in me as a student? Anybody thought I'd focus on uh, school? I think you'll focus on school, but probably football. That's uh, just kind of middle. Okay, Nancy, you hit it on the head. I was focused on football. <laughs> Gold, Orton, Golden it. Gophers. Golden Gophers, that's right. There we go. So here, here I was. Things were looking good against Ohio State right here. What eventually happened to my NFL career, um, ambitions and dreams? Who has an idea? What eventually happened to those dreams? What do you think? You probably got cut short. Okay, because of what? You got injury? Hurt. Maybe injury, yeah. Injury. Yeah. injury. You guys are sharp. <laughs> Things are looking good. Here I am, power clean, 300-something pounds from the floor. I did this many times before. On this particular day, it was in the summertime. I was in a hurry. I remember getting down to pull the weight, and I went to pull. And I was in a hurry. Instead of using my legs, I didn't pull my back. Mm. See, I found myself doubled over on the floor, pain shooting through my body, and tears coming out of my face. I looked at my coach. I said, I can't move. And the coach said, so what, got it away. I said, wow, it's like that now? So I crawled on the floor to the treatment center to get treatment for my back, and I still couldn't walk. And now the University of Minnesota, the school had told me they loved me so much, they wouldn't even give me a ride back to my dormitory. So one of my teammates had to carry me on his shoulder, and he was carrying me. I was wondering if my football career was over with. And lo and behold, the same newspapers that were, that were touting my success on the football field tied to my demise and my football career was over with. But I still hadn't got the, the, the full length of academics being the thing I had to focus on. It wasn't until I was back home, my junior year of college, I was back home, my mother and I, and I was driving my older brother's minivan and we were picking up his girlfriend and bringing her back to our house. And I remember pulling the minivan back in front of the house to try to parallel park the minivan. And I noticed at the corner was a black Cherokee sitting at the corner. So the Jeep turns and starts coming our way. I didn't pay much mind. I continued to try to parallel park the minivan. And suddenly I started hearing pop, pop, boom, 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 boom. And it was gunshots. And I heard gunshots before, but something in my mind was like, you better get down. So with my foot still on a brake, I leaned over towards the middle of the van. And that's when the glass starts shattering on the van. And I'm thinking to myself, as I'm covering my head and chest area, man, I'm about to die. And then the, the gunshot stopped. I looked around, I got the glass off me to see if I had been shot and thank God I hadn't been. I instantly looked over at my mother and she wasn't moving. And I started to panic a little bit, but then she pops up and she responds. We look for the young lady in the back, she pops up. 
We stepped from the minivan. The minivan was shot up from front to back from two shooters. And there was a bullet that was lodged in the bottom window sill of the driver's door that was meant to kill me. And at that particular time, I told myself I was not going back to that environment. I went back to the University of Minnesota, a completely different person, totally focused. I started sharing my story, started mentoring other kids in the community, mm -hmm. and then went on to get my degree, the peace sign. Young, young people, is that still cool? Justice, is that cool? <laughs> That's cool. Okay, they, they say deuces. I, we, we see say peace back in the days, all right? <laughs> so I got one degree, but I said, you know what? That's not enough. I don't have any safety net. So I said, I went and got two degrees and three degrees. And then I got my four degrees. You see my four degrees right there behind me there? Okay. Who my doctor of education. And then I went on and became a school principal. And here I am. Mm -hmm. I, I'm watching. He doesn't do horses. This is the only time you'll <laughs> ever, ever see me on a horse. Dr. Surreal, you won't ever see this ever again. <laughs> <laughs> I met a major rating goal. I got on the horse. We had one suspension the entire year. I jumped on the horse, and there it is, though. So you, it's the only time you'll see me on a, on a horse. But probably this picture right here is probably outside of the pictures I have with my family. This is probably one of the, the my, my, my favorite pictures of all time. I got a chance to take this picture on top of the University of Minnesota football stadium with the trunk that I was once homeless living out of. And what this picture says to me about hope is that when you hope and dream, there's absolutely nothing that can stop you, okay? Nothing that can stop you. I don't care what your situation is. If you can believe in the end you're gonna win, you can win. Most barriers that we face in life are more mental barriers, more so than physical barriers, because any situation you can come up with, there's a story of someone making out of that situation, you know, okay? So you gotta believe, you gotta be hopeful. And just in case you're interested, uh, my book is called A Face of Courage. And it's actually been turned into an award-winning uh, uh, short film that you can catch on YouTube. You just put in Dr. Tommy Watson, Resilient. We're next in the process now of raising money for the featured film. So be on the lookout for Resilient, the movie as well. So now this is the piece where I really, really want you to take a picture of this slide right here, okay? Because I did my doctoral work on motivation. And I want you to know that no matter, these three Vs are prevalent in all aspects of motivation, okay? Anything you study on motivation, these will be, they'll maybe may be, may be called something different, but it's, it's pretty much these three things, okay? So the first thing, if you're going to stay motivated after your goals and dreams, you have to be connected to your values. And values is about what's important to you, okay? You have to know who's important to you. There were times on my journey that I wanted to give up. And I had to think about my grandmother and all the sacrifices she had made for me. That kept me going, okay? But I want you to hear this, okay? If a person can get you to give up the thing that you say is important to you, that person owns you. I'm gonna say that one more time. If a person can get you to give up the very thing that you say is most precious, most important to you, that person owns you. I'm gonna go back to this football story. There was a, back in the days, there was a, there was a football player from Ohio State. His name was Maurice Claret. He was a freshman at Ohio State. He was the best freshman. He was the best player in the United States of America, okay? Now, when it comes to college football, you have to go to college for three years in order to go to the pros. He was in his first year, okay? Maurice Claret accepted a car from one of the donors, and he shouldn't have, have, have done that. But the words of that donor were, when, he, when Maurice Claret accepted that car, he said, now I own him, okay? Maurice Claret's career went downhill after that. He could have went to the pros and probably made a ton of money. He ended up dropping out of school. He ended up committing crimes and ended up going to jail. Okay. So whatever you say is most important to you, you have to stay true to it. Okay. The second thing is vision. Ancient scripture says where there's no vision, the people what? Perish. They perish. Okay. You have to have a vision for your life because get this, every day that you wake up, as a young person, as an adult, without a vision or goal or dream for your life, I want you to be aware that someone else has a vision and a goal and a dream for your life. I'm going to say that one more time. Every day that you wake up without a vision or goal or plan for your life, be aware that someone else has a vision and a goal and a plan for your life. You know, when it's, we're talking about incarceration, I used to be a school principal. One of the, re, one of the ways the Department of Justice would build criminals, uh, ju uh, excuse me, prisons, was based upon the reading scores of third graders. And they would look at third graders and say, 
this amount of third graders can't read and write. It's a pretty good chance they're not going to catch up in school. So they will probably end up committing crimes. So we're going to build prisons based upon that. Okay. I'm here to tell you today that if you, even as a, no matter how old you are, you got to have a vision for your life. Because you may not necessarily like the vision or goal or plan someone else may have for you, though, okay? And I'm going to go back to that statement again. Your dream or your vision has to be bigger than your current reality. Mm. Because if it's not, you're not going to move towards that vision or goal. You're going to come up with a bunch of excuses why you should stay here, okay? I have always had a vision and a goal and a dream to go to the NBA and NFL. I never went to either one of them. However, that vision and goal took me to at least college football, D1 football. It kept me out of a lot of trouble. It kept me connected to a lot of people. It gave me a chance to travel the nation, see new people, okay? So you got to have a big goal, big dreams, and a big vision for yourself. And lastly, is verbal affirmations. Verbal affirmations is about being your, big, your biggest cheerleader, okay? There are going to be times when you, when you go through this life, people are going to tell you, you can't do this, you can't do that. You got to have that brain, that, that, that voice in your head saying, I can't do it. I can't achieve it. I can't make it. So you have to become your biggest cheerleader, okay? And then lastly, I want to do one more thing here. Move, skip ahead here. I want to share with you um, my, my, uh, my, 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 I'll tell you guys I was a rapper, first of all. Surreal, did I tell you I was a rapper? <laughs> Nancy, I didn't tell you that. <laughs> all right, young people, I'm, I'm going to tell you, the cat's out the bag. Dr. Watson is also a rapper. I'm not a good rapper. I tried it one time, but I did rap, okay? So before, I'm gonna, before I share with you the song, I want to share with you the chorus, okay, to the song, okay? I wrote this chorus, okay? So what you're going to hear when, I, when the chorus comes on, you're going to hear, will it ever change? Now, the line that preceded that, will it ever change, goes back to when I got a chance to go see my mom in prison in third grade. It was devastating. Mm. Surreal, the, the way... Uh, Proverbs 20, uh, 226 is doing it is the way that it should have been done. Unfortunately, when I went to go see my mom in prison 40 years ago, they just kind of threw us in there with all these adults. And so the line says, seeing you locked in chains didn't ease my pain, left me feeling ashamed out in the rain. Can't explain the pain, how I stayed sane. Don't like the game. Then you hear, will it ever change? And then you hear resilient as a reminder. All this stuff right here may be resilient, okay? I'm here to tell you today, you guys are resilient, okay? You're also going to hear something about scars. Scars equal challenges. Many of you have been through challenges in your life. I want you to know you're an overcomer. So listen to the chorus. And I'm going to play the rap for you, and then we're going to take some questions, okay? Never change. I want you guys to know when you look back over your life and think about the scars and challenges that you face, you are an overcomer. Don't let those things overwhelm you. You are an overcomer. You are a survivor. I would even love to see this become our theme song, possibly for the organization here as well. Surreal. Maybe we'll talk about that though. Yes. Okay. So now I want to shoot you guys a couple of bars. All right. So what you're going to see is this is called a music video. It's, 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 it's going to be clips from my, um, from my um, movie but you're going to get a chance to hear me rapping. Here we go. Can everyone see that? Mm -hmm. Here we go. Alone. Man, what in the world went wrong? Mama, when are you coming back home? 
why'd you leave me for so long? Remember the past is so painful. How in the world can I be thankful? My spirit is becoming more hateful. I had love since I was in the cradle. All the foster homes and no family. Left me bitter and feeling kinda lonely. Man, will anybody ever want me? Will it just be me and no family? Seeing you locked in chains, didn't ease my pain. Left me feeling ashamed. Out in the rain, can't explain the pain. How I stay sane, don't like the game. Will it ever change? No address, did very little to leave the stress. Everything around me says I'm doomed. Hoping tomorrow will come real soon. Mom and dad left and betrayed us, giving the dope man all our stuff. Will I ever get a chance to trust again? Man, I'm lonely and have no friends. My life is broken, filled with void. Everything around me is getting destroyed. Will I ever get a chance to experience joy? People I like, I now avoid. How many parents leave a kid for days? How many leave and go to separate ways? How many grandmas raising babies? How many? You'll be amazed. Sports be my way out. Increase my education to fill my dial. Found out school could end my drought. College, what's that all about? Little did I know at the time what I thought buried me in my grind was giving me strength and growing my mind, allowing me to stand the test of time. All of the years of kids laughing, hands down paved the way for people asking, How's your life been so long lasting? The pain is now, feel my passion. Education and sports be my beam and light. Guide my life, trying to stay tight. Hustling, grinding with all my might. Holding on my dreams till daylight. My message to you on your darkest night. There's a lesson to learn. You'll be alright. Thank God above and keep your fists tight. But whatever you do, keep up the fight. Resilience is all about your season. Know your life has purpose and a reason. Now that you know, go get some. Yours truly, Dr. Watson. Alright, I have to drop the mic there. <laughs> alright. That's it. How was that? Oh, wonderful. Um, you know, brother, thank you so much for taking time to do this morning awesome. with us. Uh, you know, for the rest of the team, I never told them this, Dr. Watson, that you're joining the the journey with Proverbs 2 to 6 as we break the generational curse. And uh, you're coming to the board and, uh, you know, and all these things is just mm -hmm. such a, a pleasant, um, you know, welcome. So, so real, can I ask one, one thing? I'm sorry for time. Are there any questions? Can we take questions real quick? Yes. Are there, are, are there any questions out there? My, my apologies. I want to make sure you guys got that information there. Um, any questions at all? Um, I guess the question I had is when you basically found out that your like football career was over, like how did you handle that? Because I know that could be like really devastating. Like what were some methods you used to like cope with that? That's a great question. And, you know, great keep question. in mind, I've been playing sports since I was a little kid. So it, it was devastating for me. And I had to find a, a new why. So going back to a bigger dream. So up to that point, my whole dream was about going to the NFL. Once that dream for the NFL went bye-bye, I had to come up with a new dream. So now the dream became about how do I impact the lives of young people? So I was so passionate about that. that I wanted to become a principal. So you got to always keep the dream in line because, again, um, when you have these big dreams, even when you accomplish that dream, you got to be willing to go on to your next dream to keep thinking bigger and bigger and bigger. But certainly when I, when I when my football career ended, I was devastated. Great question. Any other questions? I want like to know um, how we can get all this. Um, I see your website. So if we go on your website, when we get this story, because I tell you, it's just tell everybody I know, I have a little nephew and his goal is 11, no matter what, he's going to be a, a NBA, nice, some of everything. But it's like, and it helps him emotionally. Yes. Because he's gone through a lot at 11. 
And yes. your story is just so inspiring. And I know it can be done by the grace of God. So if I go on your website, will we find all this information? Yes, ma'am. You, you, you'll be able to find books. You'll be able to find videos and everything else, though. And I'm glad you said that because, again, for the adults and parents out there, if you have a kid who wants to go to the NFL or NBA, please don't tell them they can't go. Let that dream stay in their, in their mind because that dream in itself, I never went to the NFL or NBA, though, but I got to play college football. I got a chance to go get four degrees. I got a chance to be around some kids who had different goals and dreams. I had a chance to learn some discipline in an area where all my friends were falling off and doing other stuff, though. So to play sports, it takes a high level of discipline and you get a chance to connect with other kids who have similar goals and dreams. So let that dream stay out there. Life will tell them in itself whether they go to the NFL or NBA though. We just want to simply be there to be a cheerleader. So that's a great question, a comment. Thank you, Ms. Bob. Uh, any other questions or comments? I have a comment. Yes, ma'am. I said, I said earlier, it might've been in my prayers or it just might've been with me talking but this is an example, you're an example of all things work together for good for us because we love the Lord and we are called according to our purpose. Through you going through those valleys, it made you come out like pure gold. And now you're sharing with others who are going through the same um, type situations. Everything may not be the same, but it's very similar. And um, I pray that this video, your story, will go to every school, el elementary, middle, and high school, so these children can have hope to know that this is real, that they are not by themselves. And I, I have to ask this, who is a Zoom user? It has Zoom user up there, and we don't want to miss a kid and, and let you not be recognized as being here. So if you will, you may not be able to Put it in the chat. I don't know, but whoever Zoom user is, please let us know who you are. It may not be a child. And Aaron, A R U N. I just have to throw this in right now, Doctor Tommy, because we don't want these children not to get credit for being here. I don't know who Aaron is. A R U N. Please let us yeah, know. Yeah, it's That's our tech team. Oh, sense. okay. <laughs> Okay. And I'm on the tech team, so I should have known that, right? <laughs> That's awesome. And you know, you bring up a great point because there are a lot of things you guys could be doing this morning. I thank you as young people for being here. And again, the work of, uh, you know, Dr. Surreal and the team has been absolutely amazing. I can't wish, I'm, I'm excited to join forces. As I wrap things up, are there, is there any last question at, at all before I turn things back on? Um, I had a question. Um, so at one point, did you like form a relationship with God? Like, Great question. You know what? When, when I was playing football for University of Minnesota, I was a guy who went off to college. I could fight real well. I had a good girl. I had a lot of girlfriends. I could win football. After I almost lost my life in that drive-by shooting, I learned really quickly how precious life was and how quickly it could be gone. And that's when I went back to campus and really uh, turned my life. That's when I discovered that God had had a bigger plan for me because there, there was a guy about a year earlier than that. He had told me, he said, man, you know, I told him a little bit about my story. He said, God has been looking out for you. And I got angry. I said, what do you mean God's looking out for me? Had he been looking out for me, I wouldn't have gone through all this stuff here. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until I was in that drive-by shooting where I said, wow, maybe God has been looking out for me for a reason to do something bigger with this, though. So great question. And that's when I went back and, um, you know, turned my life over to Christ. And again, that doesn't necessarily mean that I've been a perfect person on this journey, but I always recognize that I can't do anything without him. Amen. Amen. So, Amen. Great question. Yeah. Yes, Tommy, if it's okay with you, I want to share um, with the team um, your um, a movie clip, uh, The Resilience. This is the one, right? Yeah, this is uh, from, uh, that's from the short film, yeah. You got the sound? Yes. So this, is, this is a trailer from the short film. Yes. Do you want, do you have another one that... Uh, is it better than this? I have another one that we we have done for um for the movie. Okay. Do you want to share that, Dr. Okay. Tommy? So let, give me a moment to pull this up. You want to? Yeah. So while you're doing, you know, I just want to uh, everyone to know, Dr. Tommy is going to come inside with us to the prison, talking to these kids mm. uh, that are coming to see their mama dads as well, um, and he's going to travel with us in this journey and uh, we'll continue to form alliance with his vision 
my prayer and hope is that we will, you know, um, you know, sharpen like an iron sharpens iron. God has a plan for Dr. Tommy. Will absolutely give, uh, you know, what God wants to do uh, in Dr. Tommy's life as well as uh, he's very committed uh, mm -hmm. to be part of uh, Proverbs two to six. Amen. Mm, that's great. Amen. You know, while I'm doing this, if anybody else has any questions, I can answer questions while I'm looking for this particular video here. If there's any questions as well. Are you, where are you located? <laughs> I'm in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Oh my, okay. So uh, you do guest speaking a lot of times to Nancy? <laughs> I do. I do. You yeah. get in my faith. <laughs> yeah, definitely reach out to me. Would love to, um, would love to, um, Speak and encourage, you know, that's 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 what I do. I love it, especially in the area here as well. Uh, I have a, a sister in Charlotte, so just to sometime meet you, are you at a, a church or do you just have your office? I have my own business doing this. I go around the country doing it, and but um, also a motivational speaker. Yeah. Well, welcome. We're so happy to have you with us. Such a blessing. Mm -hmm. That's the so role for your, all your wisdom and connections. <laughs> Thank you very much. Are you, you still are you still a principal? Have you retired from education, uh, the the building of education, right in that building? <laughs> I did I, I left the profession about thirteen years ago? Actually, I'm coming up on thirteen years ago when I started my own business, speaking, coaching, and consulting. So I walked away from being a principal, um, yeah, thirteen years ago, to go after my dream and impact the lives of other other young people in particular. Mm -hmm. One second, I got to have to send this to myself, my email. Sorry about this. It's so real. I don't know if there's any comments you make anybody. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So, <laughs> um, so uh, you know, the one of the things that, you know, Dr. Ta Tommy brings to the table is not only his uh, story, but, uh, you know, uh, but he's, uh, 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 you know, he brings a wealth of wisdom and knowledge. Um, you know, a lot of times, you know, we see that uh, um, we all need inspiration. You know, um, it's not just the kids that needs that inspiration. Every one of us needs. And he he is, God has just gifted him with, uh, you know, such uh, wisdom that he's able to inspire, um, you know, not only the children, but also the adults and the people to just like a care about. The Bible says that, you know, in uh, Psalms 41, consider the poor, right? Uh, it's just like a three words out of the first three verses. You know, God takes care of the rest. If we can just like, uh, you know, pay attention to what's going around us. And that's what Dr. Tommy is doing. Yeah, thank you. I think I have a cue up here. Let me, um, can you guys tell me if you can see this here? Can you guys see that? You can see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. So this is called a proof of concept trailer for the actual feature film that we're going to be doing. This kind of gives you a glimpse into what you will probably see once we get the movie uh, completed. We're in a fundraising phase now, but here you go. Let's see here. You guys hear it? Yeah. Can you make it full screen? Hurry, hurry, hurry.
There you go. It's coming soon. Be ready for that. <laughs> yeah. Paul, thank you, brother, for being with us, uh, you know, and uh, encouraging all of us. Uh, you're definitely a, an inspiration for many. And uh, I hope, uh, kids, uh, you were able to see, uh, you know, I, I still remember the first quote uh, that Dr. Tommy said, you know, when he talked about the hope, right? He said, have only positive expectations. Mm -hmm. There may be other things that are happening around us. We may not have a control over, but know this for sure. God is on our side. And there's nothing that we can do to just like a break that away from us. His love is real. Mm -hmm. Dr. Tommy, thank you so much, uh, kids. Thank you so much for joining us.